headline tonight in Hannity's America, is it even news anymore? Another Obama appointee is under investigation. Now this time, it's the administration's new car czar. Now the Wall Street Journal revealed today that Stephen Ratner is the subject of a long-running SEC investigation into a massive pay-to-play scheme. Now authorities allege that several investment firms, including the one co-founded by Mr. Ratner, paid to get investments from the $122 billion New York State Pension Fund. Now, the next stage of the SEC's investigation will focus on Mr. Ratner's firm and several others suspected of wrongdoing. The SEC alleges that Mr. Ratner met with a politically connected consultant in an effort to gain access to the pension fund, then paid $1.1 million for a service, and then, guess what, miraculously received an investment from the pension fund. Now, the case has already led to three criminal indictments and a guilty plea. Now, maybe having one tax cheat after another is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to Obama's Chicago ethics. White House Press Secretary Robert Gibbs took questions from reporters in Mexico City, Mexico yesterday. And as you'll see in tonight's edition of Liberal Translation, my pal, my buddy, my friend Robert is just as elegant south of the border as he is back in Washington. Let's take a look. Well. <laughs> I think, and I've obviously talked about this, and I think the president has too, this is not an, we know this is not an easy issue. Um, I think he spoke uh, in some ways about that today. Um, but he, I think the president also understands that a number of the issues that he deals with in some way, shape, or form are divisive. But that doesn't uh, alleviate our obligations to deal with them. Uno. Ah, Robert, Robert, Robert. Now, first of all, have you thought about maybe using Michelle Obama's hairstylist? And also, I think you should take a week for yourself in Cancun before coming back to D.C. Robert, it looks like you need a vacation pretty badly. Now, you may remember that some members of a certain political party getting a little worked up over the National Security Agency's gross invasions of privacy during the George W. Bush era. Now, the New York Times first breathlessly disclosed that President Bush's top secret wiretapping program in an action that many call treasonous, and they wasted no time editorializing that, quote, this administration has a long record of expanding presidential powers in dangerous ways. So assurances that surveillance targets are carefully selected with reasonable cause don't comfort. Now, the Bush administration supposed privacy violations became a rallying cry for its leftist critics. Well, now the New York Times itself is reporting that according to government officials, since President Obama took office, the NSA has been spying on you illegally. Quote, the National Security Agency intercepted private email messages and phone calls of Americans in recent months on a scale that went beyond the broad legal limits established by Congress last year. And if you've been wondering about that heavy breathing in the background in your phone conversations, well, now you know who's responsible. But where's the outrage? Now, I checked the New York Times editorial page today, and I only found editorials about the Clean Water Act and gay marriage. I'm shocked. Embattled Connecticut Senator Chris Dodd is finding himself making national headlines again. And you may have guessed that it's not exactly good news for Mr. Dodd. Now, we have told you about his questionable mortgages and his controversial role in the AIG bonus scandal. Well, now there is this. According to campaign finance documents filed by the senator on Wednesday, the man who has represented Connecticut for three and a half decades, well, he's having trouble finding donors in, of all places, Connecticut. Now, Senator Dodd, who's preparing for the fight of his political life in 2010, well, he received donations from only five, yes, five in-state donors, totaling about, wow, a massive $4,000. Now, on the flip side, his popularity with folks that he doesn't even well represent, well, that's another story. His out-of-state bankroll was over $600,000 for the first three months of the year. 
Now, many election analysts say that they're stunned by these numbers, as Connecticut is normally one of the most donor-friendly states in the entire country. Now, call me crazy, but I don't think five votes is going to send Mr. Dodd back to Washington. And I have a funny feeling that the word former is about to become a part of his new title. And that is the news tonight from Hannity's America. Let